Aye, nice and quiet though. Reflecting oh. on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You drink, you drink on the phone. <laughs> Aye, the, the hundreds of them. Oh, <coughs> right, the hundreds of them, hundreds of them. I'm just doing some town checks and stuff. <coughs> Airborne, check. Ground, check. Com, check. Race yeah. team, check. <laughs> well, well, how are you Aye, doing? This the is the hundreds of them. The Mackham. Happy show on a Monday night with um, a right, very important special guest here. It's Davey. How are you doing, Davey? <coughs> I'm champion, mate. How are you doing? I am not too bad, mate. Too, too bad. Just going to see if I can actually hear you all right first on the, uh, on the chat, which we should be fine. Just well, up. well, Turn how are you doing? This is the of the right on, mate. <coughs> happy show on a Monday night with um, a right, very important special guest here. It's Davey. How are you doing, Davey? <coughs> hello? How are you doing? Aye, hello, how are you doing? Just want to see if can yeah. actually hear you. Right, there we are. We should just have all set to go now. Yeah, so hi, welcome to the uh, the Monday Night Show. Davey, um, is a superstar of BBC Radio Newcastle, aren't you, mate? Yeah. I'm just a bit of a star there. Yeah. I'm very popular. <laughs> very popular. Aye, so... Um, First of all, uh, do you want to just tell uh, people on, on the YouTube a little bit about yourself and about your, your antiques, about ringing up... Uh... Yeah. Okay, so he was Dave okay? Aye, aye, aye. Oh, well, I've been, I've been a solo supporter for just over 50 years now. Aye. Seen it all, been there, done it, spent all the games and everything. Uh, and then about two years ago, I got in touch with Radio Newcastle, rang them up, and uh, since then I've never been off. I'm on nearly every night now, and absolutely love us. It, it is like, uh, there's just so much energy coming in um, when you phone up. I mean, uh, Gary Bennett, Nick Barnes, and Marco. Um, I just love it when you shout, more, more, you know what I mean? Still got you, God, yes, dear me. Yes, dear me, <laughs> <I>. <laughs> Ah, it's good crap for them lads, like, it's a good programme lads. Ah, uh, it is, I, and it's great to have you on here, I mean, I'm, I'm just starting this weekly show on a Monday night, um, and That's I thought, good. thought I might as well do, I've been, people have been very supportive from my channel, tuning in, and um, I think it, it could take off every every Monday. So, um, what, what do you think about the game on on Saturday then, Dave? Did you see well, any improvements? Massive improvements. I mean, uh, the ticket and we should have really won, like, shouldn't we? I mean, to me, all that was missing was a centre forward, a goal scorer. And we would have won that game comfortable. We're in total control of the game. And it's just missing a, like, a, like, a, like a, a striker, like an experienced striker who just puts the ball in the net. A bit like a pop Robson, you know? Somebody just to stick it in the net. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, George Bellingham, I mean, how many chances? I mean, yes, um, good good keeper, good saves, the keeper made. Yeah. But let's, let's be real, he should have buried them, shouldn't he? Right. You can, I mean, he does his best, but you can just say he's not a striker, like. Yeah. He he, he gets, he, I mean, give him his juice, he gets in the right place as a striker does. He yeah. just hasn't got the finish. No, no. And, and that, that, that hopefully will come with... Um, with, with, with time and, and experience as he, you know, as, as he gets a bit older and stuff and gets a bit more minutes under his, under his belt and that like. Um, our Dears has just come into the chat and he just says, Davey, great lad, so you've got a, you've got a fan already, Davey lad. That's what we like to hear. Aye, and Kevin Taylor says, hi Cabby, good to see you mate. Uh, well done on your Monday night show. Yeah, you're listening to Davey as well, who's massively popular, son fan on Radio Newcastle. Um, go on the app and you'll be able to listen to um, his, uh, his very energetic calls and stuff. Um, but yeah, there was um, it was a slight better performance, wasn't it, Davey? Um, I would say against um, um, Bristol City, but it's it's still got that end of season um, pittering out, hasn't it? Ah, you can definitely say like there's no to play for really other than pride, like but. And again, to me, like, being a Sunderland player, there should be no free hits at all, like, there should be privilege to play for the club, like. 
Yeah, I, to I totally agree. And there's so many times where players seem to get off jack free, don't they? And like everybody keeps going on about the owners and setting the other. But I mean, how you know you should be proud putting your red and white top on, going out into that stadium because the fans. If you try your hardest, Davey, the, the fans will adore you. Kevin Ball used to oh. say that a lot. That the, the, the and they don't know what they're missing these players. If they really try hard, the the noise and the support they'll get from the fans better than any club. And they don't they don't seem to realise this. The players, do they? Oh, I mean, it's a fantastic thing. It's like you say, if you just put the effort in and the crowd say you're putting the effort in, like you say, they'll fall in love with you. I've seen some players down there with limited ability, but the fans absolutely love them because they put the effort in. I mean, you've got players like Naira Noseworthy. He couldn't play football, but the fans loved him because he, he would go through a brick wall. Absolutely, yeah. And do you know who was very similar to that as well? And he was a striker. Was um was Josie Altador? Yeah, he, he couldn't hit, he couldn't hit a barn door, but the fans liked his attitude. His attitude was like um you could you could see he was he was trying his best, and the fans the fans adored him for it. Yeah, it was not stupid. I mean, like you said, he had very limited ability, but if you try, that's all you can do in life, isn't it? If you try your best. Yeah, and there's there's no worse, and there's too many players on that pitch. Um, especially the Blackburn game, trotting around with a head in the sand and the shoulders down, and, and it's just it's just not good enough. People are paying the money to go and watch that. Do you know what I mean? I agree exactly. I mean the least you, the least you expect is total effort. You can never determine the result. Nobody can do that. But you should be able to count on like the t the players putting a hundred percent in every game. Oh, hundred percent. I Kevin Taylor in the chats just says, "Well said, Davy." Um, and Diaz has said we need new owners, Cabby. I mean, uh, do we really want to be keep going around the merry-go-round of getting new um, owners? Callum Hall has just popped in as well, saying evening, hello, Callum. I mean, look, I mean, I've heard you a few times on the Newcastle going on about um, you know, you know, the owners and stuff. I mean, it just seems like we're going on a backward spiral with them, doesn't it? I mean, I mean, I remember, I remember when I come out to Wembley when we got promoted out there. First division, and I said to my son there, and then I says, "You know what it is, Kevin? I think we've got a chance here. We seem to have good owners with a club at heart who want to go forward. But since this season, they just seem to be going backwards, and you didn't hear from them. There's no like, you know, that you don't get any explanations about anything that's going on, and it's just disheartening. And the fans deserve better. Like, I, I, absolutely. I mean, it's." You you can know there's only so many t there's only so long you can hide in your ivory towers as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned I mean we've had we've had quite a lot of poor transfer windows and the fans have been crying out for strikers left right and centre and they're just getting ignored and I I feel this summer it'll be KLD and Speakman's last chance if they're gonna stay um, to prove themselves what they're gonna do this summer because the fans won't stand for it bringing more kids from France or Ukraine or anywhere like that um, if they're carrying on with the model then the fans will just force them out Davey like do you agree on that? Yeah I mean I mean you can't tell me them, them upstairs watching that on Saturday must, must, must have come away and thought you know if we had a good strike we would have won that game you can't think anything else Well you would think so wouldn't you I mean I know I know mm. I mean, we've been crying out for a striker since Ross Stewart got injured. Yes. And we still haven't had a proper centre forward since then, a proper number nine since it, the, t the time he got injured. Which is like Middlesbrough last year away when he got injured in the warm up. It's just. I don't, I don't know. It, it's. We sort of got excited, didn't we, when we was like bringing the youngsters in and the kids and stuff. Um, but I don't know. Do you, do you think the majority of are cutting it? Who they brought in, the likes of Rusin and and things like that. Um, or do you, do you think? I mean, when you, when you've been speaking on Radio Newcastle, Dave, the um, Mark Warren, especially has said he says one thing that some of the lacking is balance in that team. We've got kids, yeah. and when they go a goal down, their heads go down, and there's no experience on that pitch to pick up them kids, to pick them up, to say, hey, this is what we do in this situation. Where, and how many times does the KLD need to be told this? 
I just, I just want to stop the other day. The average age of a team that wins the championship is 29 year old. It's so does that not, does that not tell you something? He, he, he's in charge, he's at, he's at the helm, isn't he? Um, you, you think he would know this. I mean, you can't you can't tell me KLD doesn't keep an eye on social media and these fans' forums and stuff. You, why aren't they taking notice? I mean, if there's anybody who knows the club better than anyone, it's us fans who have supported them for life. Do you know what I mean? We know what the club needs. And in a way, we're sort of giving KLD a hand. You know, we're helping him out here. And you think, you know, he, he would take some sort of heed on it, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would, you would. I mean... Like you say, recruitment the last two windows has been really, really poor. Oh, yeah. I mean, that Hemia, Hemia and Burstow, just not what we wanted. Maybe come good in years and years to come, but they ain't what we want to get us out of the championship. No, no, absolutely not. There was there was a bit of excitement as well when uh, Burstow came in, thinking like, oh yeah, Chelsea player coming through, like, but he's uh, he's non-existent, eh? Non-existent. But just the, I just the night there reading uh, an article that someone wanted to buy him in the summer. Someone missed the bullet. Someone wanted to buy him. So we missed the bullet. Bloody missed the bullet. Right, your days <laughs> is on the chat says John Kay was my favourite player. Now I mean, you, you, you're talking. That's the good old Kevin, Kevin Ball here, aren't you, John Kay? Blood, sweat, yes. and tears. And Ken Walton says good evening, Cavi. Um, just sat down um, enjoying the chat from a storm sweat corn. Well, you're listening to um, Davey as well, um, a, a guest, um, he's a regular caller for BBC Radio Newcastle, very popular guy, knows his stuff really well and passionate about Sun and the FC. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah, we've definitely, definitely, I would say, dodged a, a bullet in there. Like, I mean, so what, what, what do you think KLD needs to do then to start to turn the fans round to get a bit more faith? What, what do you think the need the need to do apart from the obvious, which is the striker? And you know he's, he's focusing on the stadium and going to get new floodlights and this and that and the other. But surely it's on the pitch that matters. To, to me, the, the pitch the pitch is exactly what matters because other things will come. You get things right on the pitch, pitch, and everything. So everything else will come with it. He needs to have some dialogue with the fans because it's it, it's getting the fans down that you don't hear anything from them at all. That is, it's that it's that silence, isn't there? And you've mentioned so many times is the fact yeah. that you know, the, especially that Blackburn, that absolute utter diet performance, and then there's just that terrifying silence, and which and it just winds the fans up more. And I think Dodgy's just being used as a scapegoat, if, if you ask me, Davey. Like I think he's just been, you know, he's taking the flak, isn't he? Um, oh, helped. you know, and he's been, he's, he's been thrown to the lions, hasn't he? I mean, he inexperienced his cell and he's just pushed out there yeah Colin says totally you agree know? Ashton says hello that's my son Ashton how are you doing lad? yeah um, I mean if you if you remember when Michael Bale come uh, when he, his first interview Speakman was sitting alongside him yes but yes. he's never been seen since he's, he's never been seen since not at all I mean yeah. To me, that that indicates to me that there's the summit not right. There's the summit gone on. I mean, you know, in 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 past press conferences as well. I mean, like the the, the press and stuff. They're, they're not allowed to ask certain questions about money, this and that and the other. And there's there's been time where, you know, Speakman's been there doing a press conference, and I think someone's answered asked a question about money, um, and without any word of warning, the stream has been cut short live. No word of warning, no goodbye. It's just been cut short like because they don't want anything to be asked about money. And then, as if by magic, 20 minutes later, the stream came back on and Michael Beale was just sitting there on his own. I mean, how are It's yeah, a joke. It's, it's worrying because I, I personally, I mean, like I say, I've been a fan for 50 years. I think this is one of the biggest summers we've ever encountered as a club. It's absolutely massive. Of course it is. Of course it is. You know, um, what what would you like to see KLD do in in the summer, Davey? What what would you what would you like to see him do? I mean, he's supposed to be a multi millionaire. Would you, and I know it's not all about splashing the cash and that doesn't get you success. But what would you like to see him do to sort of win the fans back away? To me, at the moment, this club is a million miles away from getting promoted. 
Last year we weren't. We thought, oh, they had to, if if they'd invested in two players last last January, not the January gone, the January before, I think we would have went up. Yes. That, was that the chance? You don't know. But they do need to invest in three or four quality, experienced players to mix in with the young lads. Because you've got no chance unless you've got experience in a team. Dazers has just repeated what you've said. He says, uh, we're a million miles away from the, the Prime League. I think he means the Premier League. And Kevin says, at least yeah. three years away from the Premier League. And But yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a thing that we, we sort of overachieved last season, finishing sort of in the playoffs. But I don't think we did overachieve last season. We had some good players, Diallo, this and that and the other. And do you know what, what's annoying a lot of the Sunderland fans as well? The chances they've had to sign players like um, the, the, the Broadheads and things like that. Um, and, and we don't get them. And even the Ellis Sims. So we miss out and yet they're banging goals in for fun, for Coventry and Ipswich. Why aren't they here? Why aren't they at Sunderland doing that? As you've just mentioned now, all wanted to come to Sunderland. I know. Sunderland, Sunderland want them, but it's always down to the wages. If it if it tips over the wage, like the most they'll pay, they'll not get them. And that's a problem we've got with Jack Clark at the moment. We're going to lose Jack Clark because we'll not pay the wages. I mean, he, he must he must know. I know I said it's not the be on and held on. It's about money. You've, you've got to spend it wisely. But, um, you know... He, he must have a wise head on his shoulders, KLD, to understand that the fact, like, to get up the pyramids of football and to be successful, um, you do have to spend money. But you know, obviously, when I say spend money, spend it wisely. Don't just do what Sonnen did in the past and splash out four million for Will Grigg. You know, but if you see a good player and you know he's good, splash the cash to get him. You've got me. I mean, Jan, yeah, Jan, Jan Mvia, the fans loved Jan Mvia. He kept putting yeah. tweets and tweets and tweets all the time. Um, saying like he can't wait to get back to Sunderland um, dead to silence and then two or three weeks later he's holding the West Bromwich Ambient scarf above his head and that really annoyed us that like and then he said I'm coming here for nothing so you think I'm going to stop this and I'm off <laughs> Derek's just says get the hell out of our club KLD speak but Derek's a good bloke in the chat as well He's uh, he, knows, he knows the crack there Dave yeah, I mean, I, I can see where fans are coming from. Get this, get them out the club, get them out. But then, where do you go? Well, who's going to take? Who's going to take over? That's that's the saying. Better the devil you know, and better the devil you don't, isn't it? But, <laughs> um, we said that about Ellis Short, and look what we ended up with. Well, abs abs absolutely. Look, I mean, the, the the thing is, right? There's a lot of fans have been saying that. Um, if if KLD carries on with this model, right, I think Sunderland will be scraping the bottom three and fighting. I think next season will be fighting for relegation if he carries on with this model. You know what I mean? Because let's face it, our last 15 games has been bottom three form. You know what I mean? And, that, and that's not acceptable. And if he carries on with this, then, um, we, you know, we, 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 we should never return to League One ever in our lives supporting Sunderland. It should just never happen again. You know what I mean? But like you say, with a model, uh, if if we continue with this model without Jack Clark, I do fear a bad start next season. Because if you if you take Jack Clark out of that team, we we like you say we're a bottom three side without a shadow of a doubt. Well, I mean the words the word, the words of warning was there, wasn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. Every time Jack Clark was injured or he was suspended for any reason Sunderland were lost for goals eh? yeah and we can't keep the ball up the pitch without him either yeah I know um, Kevin on the t Kevin Taylor says on the on the chat um, well said uh, well said, said Derek Tony says it's been um, a show every time the players are the most important get the squad right the rest will follow the team yes. will always lack consistency when it lacks experience and Derek says you can't, you, you can't spend what you haven't got Cabby as his mummy and um, Deirdre says Mike Ashley 
Um, Keith also says, Hi, Madam Cabby. We'll do now till we get rid of Speakum and this model. You know, so yeah. we all know what's, what's absolutely needed. And, um, you know, and Derek's put up a good point there. Um, I've, I, have, I've, I have been speaking to Derek a while. And um, you know he, he reckons that KLD skin he hasn't got he hasn't got a, a pot to pee in as far as we're concerned, and um, you can understand why a lot of the fans are beginning to think that as well, can't you? I mean, headlines that he's what a twenty million pound loan. I mean, what's all that about? I don't understand that one. But if he hasn't got any money for this summer, it'll be found out because this is a big summer and we need to see some investment. And on about selling Jack Clark for twenty million. Do you think they'll put the twenty million back into the side? I don't like. Well, where's the money going for Ross Stewart? We signed Ross Stewart. What, what have we got in replace of Ross Stewart? Diluted right. three or four players um, from <laughs> from Eastern European countries. Um, yeah. Well, we signed. We've signed one of the worst players that's ever put on a Sunderland shirt. That Leo Helder from Leeds on a three and a half year contract. Yes. So that's some of the money gone there. Yes, yes, he's yeah, he's been getting some some stick hells. I mean, but you've you've got to look and think. Well, why? What, who scouted for him? I mean, he must be he must, he must be decent if he's come to the club. Um, but I don't know. You ju you just get a general unrest with all the with all the players in that squad, don't you? Um, it's like it's like that Bur that that Blackburn game, for example. It's like they sort of know what's going on the way the club's going. I mean. You know, Pritchard, all of a sudden, the fans loved him and he loved the club and it, all of a sudden he just ups and away. We, you know, Sunderland's the, the, the biggest team by a mile in the championship and he's, he's left to go to Birmingham we're fighting for relegation. I mean, there's, there's some that sadly ran behind the scenes, Derek. And, um, Davey Lamb. I mean, I don't know if you've just seen the great news tonight that uh, Rusin wants to leave. Rusin wants to leave? I've not seen any... No, is, is, that, is, that, is that right? Yeah, it's broke tonight. Rusin wants to leave. He cannot settle in this country. He wants to go back home. Well, that's worrying. If you want to come back to Ukraine rather than stay here, that is a problem we've got at the club, haven't we? That, that's, a, that's a massive point in as well, isn't it? Crikey. Yeah, he wants to leave. It's broke tonight. I'm just getting the news and banter page up there now. Um, see if there's anything coming up. Um... Where did you where did you see that then, uh, Davey? Was that, was that just on I mean, social media or? Find the page. I think it's on. Right, I'll have a, I'll have a look. Scroll, scroll I have a look. Later on. Oh yes, rumours on um, RTG that Nasri Arusin wants to leave in the summer as he hasn't settled very well. Um, and someone's piece pe pe um, Ian's commented saying if he hasn't settled and wants away. Let him go. I suspect in a few years' time, um, ALS will rem will remind us it's his birthday, and the majority of us will go, "Oh yeah, I forgot he played for us." Um, someone said he works hard and runs all long, um, scores goals and gets benched for it in favour for Burstow. There's a lot of mixed reports of that. I mean, but yeah, I mean, we all knew he was pulling. It looked like he was pulling the city when he was when he when he said like, "Oh, I'm injured. He's going to be out out for eight or nine games and stuff." It's just not right, is it? No, and I mean that that was a strange one on Saturday where Abdullah Bar being omitted from the from the squad completely. Yes, and yet you've got a broke on a broke on the bench who doesn't even belong to us, Burstow, with no hope of getting on. I just can't understand that one. Yeah, Pete, you often wonder if, if there's a clause. Um, more in the chat, um, um, Tony Hunton says, Rusin is reported... Uh, yeah, yeah, just what we're paying. Tony's saying, Rusin is reported as unsettled and he wants to be away. It's a bad sign. I mean, I know he's always had a problem with his speech and this and that and the other, but, you know, you, you didn't score goals with, with how you understand the language, do you? Something strange there. Strange clause there, Pete. And then you see it for first door. How any manager could pick him is just totally beyond me. Yeah, I'm just reading a lot of the comments as well. A um, lot, of, lot, of base, lot of people are basically saying, I don't blame him because he keeps getting dropped for first door. Um, you know, if there's any talent in any of the players, they're just not getting looked after at the club. Um, you know, because he has shown at times that he's a dangerous, he's a dangerous player. 
But I mean, I don't know if there's any contracts with Burst though. He's he's got to play so many minutes. I do not. I do not know. Aye. Absolutely. So I mean, we've just got to stop being a, a, a laughing stock. I mean, we've had a little Ellis short. Yes, he cleared the debts and this and that and the other. But they carry on with the Newcastle when we play Newcastle in the cup and. It's just such an amateur setup the way they're running the club, and there's a flag outside the stadium of light that looks like it's oh, from no. Sh Shepherd Scrapyard. It's it's dropping to bits. It's it's all teared and tattered. That flag, isn't it? I mean, just silly things like that, was not it? And it's ah, different now. I'm still not convinced KLD is gonna is, is gonna will, will be here for much longer at the stadium of light. I mean, Derek's often said said that in the chat in the chat and sport of him as well. Uh, Roth said he will well, the future, There was also the carry on with electricity not Sanglo when the generator wasn't working so that that to switch the hand dryers off. <laughs> I mean, you think you were talking about you think you were talking about Hartlepool, weren't you? Uh one of the biggest stadiums in the country. <laughs> and you, and you, you, hear, you hear things like that, it's like it's it, it's a joke, isn't it? You just get sick of putting your shirt on, though, didn't you? And going to work the next day or doing whatever you're doing in your daily things. And, you know, constantly like getting laughed at because we're laughing stop at the minute the way we're going on. I mean, to lose 5 1 against Blackburn, I mean, who are like, you know, fighting for relegation. I mean, that, that's the only one. alarm bells. Uh, they've only won one game at the last 18. Well, roll up, roll up, come to Sunderland. If you're short of points, come here, we'll give you them. How long How long's that been going on for? I hate the oh, same stats. The opposition team hasn't uh, hasn't won or hasn't picked up so many points in 35 years. You know, come to the stadium of light, we'll soon change that. But the stats is not fair tomorrow. Eh? Leeds have never lost a game at home this season. <laughs> so there we go. It's our turn to do the stats. Leeds United have never lost a game tomorrow. <laughs> What's your th we'll, we'll talk about the Leeds game. What's your? I mean, you, you can't get any tougher than that, can you? No, but I think it's uh, so like I, I'm confident of a good good display tomorrow. I think we'll have Jack Clark and Roberts on the wings, and it'll be like the old times. I think. Yeah, and I think Sunderland have. Um, They've, they've, they have, they've, they've done not bad against the top teams in this division. I mean, we all know what they did to Southampton <coughs> um, at home. And yeah. I think if, if Dodds had got his tactic right, tactics right, we could have came away with a point at St Mary's when we were brought it back to 2-2. And he didn't yeah. change now. Um, that was Dodds' mistake at that. But... Um, I remember when we, came when we played Leeds at the stadium of light, we, uh, we, it was a professional performance from Sunderland. We, we dominated them, it was only 1-0, but we closed them right down. Yeah. Yeah, you know? we, we played well that night, and I've got a funny feeling that we'll put a good performance in tomorrow. Whether we'll get the results in another matter, but, <laughs> I mean, it'll be a full house, uh, and the pressure's more on Leeds than it is on Sunderland. Sunderland will just go out and enjoy the game. 100%. Um, I said that on my, my preview video the day. The fact, like, uh, the, the pressure's well and truly on Leeds. They're, they're third at the minute. And um, it, it creates a lot of squeaky bum time and anxiety with the fact, like, mm -hmm. sitting where Leeds are. Um, and they've got the lava full house tomorrow. Someone can go out there and just, when I say enjoy it, they can. They can, they can, they can just enjoy it. They've got no to lose. Um but if, if they get beat 1-0, 2-1, 2-0, yeah, it's disappointing. But as long as Sunderland try and put in a good performance, yeah. that's all we're after. That's all you that's for, in performance. You kind of guarantee the result. It doesn't matter what happens. <laughs> Rafa SAFC has just joined. Hey, mate, how are you doing? He says, mate, the club is a mess when you've got them. When you've got them, three clowns will get an average manager and average players on, and uh, will the money come back into the club when they sell these players. Um, he said, did you see the rubbish all on the football pitch on Saturday? They don't even want to pay for the cleaners to clean the stadium. I mean, that, that's mad, isn't it? You, you don't see, you don't see that in any other televised, televised game or out like that. But for some strange reason, the stadium of light, it, it was like Shepherd's Scrapyard. The, the, uh, the stuff that was blown about. It's the first time I've seen it as bad as that, like. Oh. It was, I mean, I know it was a really windy day, but you think there'd be like, 
take steps taken to stop that happening. I mean, what I could see, they, they just looked like the rappers, what people had been having from the pies at half time and this and that and the other. And I'm thinking like, well, you know what I mean? Keep your, keep your rappers in your pocket or put them in the bins in the mezzanines where the, where the shopping bit is and where you get your pies, put your, put your rubbish in the bins there. Um, but it's it's just little things like that that just make the club look uh, look absolutely shoddy as hell, man. <coughs> um, Ken Walton, hello, mate. How are you doing? Thinking back after listening to the crack, we as in Sun and DFC supporters um, have had some absolute crap. He says shite owners uh, over the over the years. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't know. It's. As, as you said before, you know, if, if KLD does guns, what's what's round the corner? What what's after KLD? Do you know what I mean? I, I would better stay with KLD than not knowing what we're going to get. Well, we might have no choice, but because it's up to him if he sells it, like. But he needs to invest money this summer. It's a massive summer for him. He must he must realise that. But he's he's, he's got me. I mean. Would, would, would you say it's time to change the the model from the coach? It's a time to start getting the manager in? I would say we should have a manager. Strong manager. But I don't think we're going to get one. I think it's going to be a head coach. Because I think that's why when Keno came for an interview that time, not long ago, um, he just basically sat down, didn't he? And Speakman's basically saying, look, I'm ruling the roost here. I'll be telling you what to do. And I think I think Roy Keane's just went, shove that up your pipe and away he's gone. Roy Keane's not going to take that from Speakman, is he? I mean, nah, come on. Not a chance Roy Keane could work with these guys. Not a cat nails chance. You know, Ken Walton says, I'm going back to the, the 60s. And Derek says, I think that Storms blew the bins over, Cabby. <laughs> um, PC Gabby, hello, welcome welcome on the chat, mate. Um, bit worried about the Leeds United game. Think we'll get hammered. <sighs> it could go that way, but I don't know. We never thought we'd get hammered off Blackburn, but we did. Look, this champion, this, this championship, Davy. It's a funny, it's yeah. a funny league, isn't it? There's teams just beating, beating everybody at the minute. It's like. You know, it's it's just crackers how some some of these results come through and that. Well, it is. I mean, right right through the league. I mean, you see the bottom teams can beat the top teams, and it's it's a, a really hard league to get out of. But you, you've got to have some experience in your side. You've got to, man. You've got to. Eh? I mean, end of the day, yes, it'll be a hard game against Leeds tomorrow. But let's not forget, they're still a Championship side as it stands. They're in the same league as us. So it's no good going there saying. God, we've got Leeds United, we're going to crap ourselves here, Premier League, blah, blah, blah. They're not. They're a championship side. They're in our division. So, it all, all depends how much the players want it, doesn't it? It's, you know, that Blackburn game, I know people might be sick of me can't back the Blackburn game, but it was so obvious, like, the Blackburn players wanted it more than we did. Oh, without a doubt. And that experience through the side, man. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, either the... I don't know. All we can do is just wait until, as you say, wait until the summer. I mean, there's not that many games left. Just, five games. There's five games left. I mean, let's have a look yeah. who we've got. I mean, I know we're not mathematically safe at the minute, but... Oh, we are. We are. The reason we're not why, mathematically, but... No. I kind of say Birmingham winning five games, can you? No. Well, apparently the, uh, the teams below us and stuff, they've got a... Play each other, like Birmingham still got to play Huddersfield. Well, that's what I'm saying. I know. I mean, obviously, we've got after that, we've got a, an, another a game away from home on the 13th of this month. We've got um, West, Brom. West Brom. Yeah, West Brom. And I remember when we last played at West Brom, we were immense. We played some of the right. most attacking, fast flowing football I've seen. And this is when we were pushing for the playoffs. Can you remember? I thought we came Minister, from one goal down. Minister. Then a certain scored a wonder goal. It was a lovely goal line, set right behind, right yeah. in front of the Sunderland fans. I mean, yeah. you know, it, it was just beautiful football to watch. It really, really was. Um, and then we've got Sunderland at home to Millwall. And no, I'm not looking at the table and saying, oh, Millwall, right there, right down the bottom end. Because how many times have we struggled against bottom teams? Oh, no. It just doesn't oh, mean no. out. Um, away to Watford, Sunderland, I've got a bad... Um, 
past there at uh, Vicky Ridge Road. Come on. And then a 12.30 kick-off last game of the season against yeah. Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday. Sheffield Wednesday, yeah. Oh, I'm surprised that they're second off bottom mind. I really are. I thought mm-hmm. they would have done a better account of the cells and stuff. So we're getting a few more people chatting on the um, on the thing here. Um, what we're going on? Typical Sunderland. Oh, Derek says when I win the lottery, I will buy KLD out. <laughs> Maybe it means he's won a tenner. Then I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Typical Sunderland. They will go Leeds and beat them. Do you know what? We wouldn't be surprised at all if that happened. We, we, we wouldn't be. Um, oh, definitely not. says, get people on StreamYard, Cabby. Um, I think I know what you mean by that. Um, Kevin says, Kevin Taylor, I think they'll want more than £10, Derek. Um, Tony Huntington says, the backroom staff are not up to it. Just look at the injuries and everyone comes back worse. Equa, Roberts, Sirkin, Evans, an example. It's a good point, that, because, I mean, Equa's not been the same player since he got injured, has he? No. Well, I think he's got a bit of a personality problem. He, 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 he's, a, he's a strange guy. Like I mean, he's so big and powerful, <laughs> and yet he can be knocked off the ball so easy in certain games. Yeah. I watched him in that Southampton game. He was sharp. He was alert. Oh. Since he's come back from that injury, um, he's, he's misplaced passes, and he's, he's a man mountain. Do you know what I mean? And, he, and he's and he's getting jumped, getting out jumped by Umpa Lumpers, and it's like it really, really winds the fans up. It's like look at the size of your head. Why are you like? You just it's frustrating. If you always remember back twenty one, I was seventeen, eighteen. Can't be asked before he danced on the tunnel. Oh, I just. Well, that's what you know, it. Do you not think as well? That's where we're lacking a leader in the dressing room, like a, a manager that's got a bit of aura, got a bit of presence. So when the manager walks into the room, the players go, they look up to him. You cannot look up to you cannot look up the dots, man. Can you? No, he's your players, isn't he? He's your, play, your players, your players, mate. I, do you know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? You, you, you want you want a manager to be a bit of an arsehole, a bit strict, but also your best mate at the same time. Do you know what I mean? The, the, I know you, we're going different leagues here, but the likes of Alex Ferguson or a Klopp and this and that and the other. Um, the world's best at it. Do you know what I mean? Strict as hell. Hoying hair dryers off David Beckham's head. Yeah. But also, right. your best mate, if you, if you do as you tell them, do well. Giving the right. manager respect. We haven't had that for a long while. Look look at look at the managers and stuff. Coaches we've had. Like the... the, 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 the that's the man manager we had. Top manager. Aye. But, uh, but I don't think we're going to go down the manager route, mind you. Not with these. Well, I mean, I don't know whether that's the that's the that's the new trend these days or not. Like, but it just doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, the the, the, the manager comes in. As far as I'm concerned, I've always been brought. That the manager picks the team. The manager gets gets the idea who who what players he brings in and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. That's what can work, man. How can you how can you have a team that's been picked from by somebody else? Well, yeah. Well, people say Speakman's not allowed to do that. He's not allowed to pick the team. But a lot of people are saying that. Well, it makes you beg to differ. Do you know what? Do you know what I mean? But I don't know. Like I said, look, look at the managers that's coming. The Larry Graysons, the Jack Rosses, and the, um, the the Parkinsons, etc. I mean, is that gonna really get the dressing room motivated? Come on. It's, it's... Who, do, who, who do you think will be the next manager then? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. You guys in the in the in the chat and stuff. Um, who do you guys think would be the next manager? We'll say the manager, coach for Son, and who would you like to be in? And um, I'll just throw in that as um, Dave. He's asked the question there. I'm yeah. going to go through some more some more comments here, Dave, because there's quite a few yeah. coming through now. Um, PC Gabby, I hope we put in a good performance tomorrow. Yep, I do agree. Stephen Simpson says, think we'll get beat 4 1. So weak, the owner is having a laugh. Rafa says, uh, what will happen though if we have a bad season next season? What's going to happen with the owners and the sporting director? Will the fans um, want them out next season if we have a bad start? Um, Ken Walton says, 
And Bobby Murray was an ex was the exception. Can anyone remember how much Stadium of Light cost SAFC? Um, Derek says I'll offer a hundred quid. The Geordie Streamer, how are you doing, mate? Oi, oi, welcome, welcome in, mate. Um, Yorkshire Magnum is a good friend of mine. Um, he's he's going for a one-one tomorrow. I will definitely take a point. Um, yeah. Deza says Bob Murray is true red and white. Um, Rafa has says Speakman has got too much control of the football club. Back to Derek, he says, I'd appoint Sir Benno as manager. His tactics are spot on and he would stop us playing out from the back. Rafa SAFC says Mickey Mouse. Kevin Taylor says Mark Robbins for manager. Um, Will still red and white army for Yorkshire Magnum. A few people have said about Gary Bennett and all, do you know what I mean? But I mean, I just don't think Gary Bennett's head head will be in it. Do you know, I think he's quite content doing his commentary and that like, but I mean, if, if there's anybody that is a leader and, and got passion, it, it's it's Ben, wasn't it? But he's got no manager experience, has he? Hey, darling. Yeah. No, but I'll just tell you my two penny thing. Yeah. I think the next Sunderland manager will be Will Still. You think it'll be Will Still? Someone asked you. Uh, Yorkshire Magnum says Will Still. Well, that's to me. That's the only reason they wouldn't have appointed somebody by now because they wanted him last summer, but they wouldn't pay the money. I just think now they've realised if they want a good coach, they're going to have to pay the money, and that's why they're selling Jack Clark and they'll use some of that money to get him in. That's, that's mad, me personal opinion. That's mad, isn't it? They didn't want to buy the get out clause for Will Still, but they had to, no. had to um, buy, do a get out clause to get rid of um, Michael Beale. It, it was just Good. bad business all around. Rafa says, um, SCFC says Steve Cooper. Um, Yorkshire Macken said Steve Cooper. Steve Simpson says Kevin Phillips. There's a few people saying Steve Cooper, man. Uh, but he's not, he not come, man. He's a Premier League manager, isn't he? Premier League, Kevin. Derek saying I'm praying it's, it's Will Still. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know much about Will still. I don't, I don't think about it. But I can just see from the club side that we're sniffing around him last summer. And I just think they're getting through this year and then they're going to go for him in the summer and they'll get him a lot cheaper than they would have last summer. Hmm. Yorkshire Macam says Steve Coop is my second choice, but I could see him being the next Wales manager. Um, nah, you he, don't spend the Premier League. Game. Nah, you're not. You, Yorkshire Macam says use the money we get for Jack Clark to try and get Diallo. I mean, I don't, I don't think Diallo's ever going to leave Man U now. Is he after that? After putting himself on the on on the on the shopping list with that display against yeah. Liverpool? It's not the fee. It's not the fee. It's the wages in the uh, want. The wages. You've got to think, you know, Man United paid all, nearly all its wages last season. Yes. I mean, you've always got that problem, haven't you? It's it's like, um, you know, Hendo, when he was at Sunderland, um, I think he was on something like 70-odd thousand a, w uh, a week. Um, Gans to Liverpool to get something like two or 300,000 a week. I mean, yeah. who's, who's going to turn that down? You're not, are you? No. It's like Jack Clark. I think Jack Clark's on 18 grand a week now. 18 grand. What's he going to be on if he signs for a Premier League team? Oh, well, well that's what I'm saying. Um, a few people have been saying, you know, is Jack Clark actually Premier League quality when he played against Newcastle? Um, he, he, Kieran Trippier had him in his back pocket. He was, he just didn't have a look in. But to, as far as I'm concerned, the whole of the team, whatever the reason was, totally underperformed that day. I mean, let's face it, right? Newcastle won 3 0. But we gifted them three bloody goals. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, the past us all over the place. But the cost of the better side, the money they've spent. But we give them three bloody goals, um, no. Davey. We didn't turn up on the day at all. No, we didn't. And there was a lot of new pundits on that day were saying I was disappointed how little effort Sunderland put in. There's the word effort again. <laughs> um, Yorkshire Macam, the under 21s have beaten Wolves. What's the score, Jacob, there? <laughs> Um, sorry for going on with these comments, but you know there's there's quite a few coming in. Um, Rafa says the club will always want a yes man, but it could be a surprise name. Um, Ken Watton would give him a hundred quid a week. Derek UK Man United paid thirty five million for Diallo. Um, Yorkshire Man United are a library club. Old Trafford is a library. Um, 
the stadium of light has a much better atmosphere than Old Trafford. Um, well, I mean, that just depends, doesn't it? The, a lot of people, fans have been saying how bad the atmosphere has been at the stadium of light, but can you blame them? You know? No. Could have something to show them, haven't you? Oh, massively, you've got to, you've got to shout about The atmosphere was fantastic last season. Oh, I've been in the stadium of light where the, 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 the hairs have stood on the back of my neck, man. Well, I definitely. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, yeah. It's, I don't know. I mean, if if you were to sit on the fence, um, could you say the Sun and fans are a lot, are a bunch of whinge bags? I mean, do you think it's been a success that we've once again we've established ourselves in the championship? We're, we're still in the championship. We're not going to go down. Look where we were four or five years ago, and look where we are now. We're an established championship side. Is that still a huge move forward for Sunland? Well. If, if these two seasons had been reversed, everybody would be happy. Mm-hmm. You know, if we'd finished mid-table last year and we'd finish sixth this year, people would be great. It would be fantastic. But it, it, that's not what's happened. It's the other way around. And this summer is huge. This summer's huge. That's a good point, that, like, Davey, because, I mean, you think being in the, in the division, then you want to get from strength to strength. You want to build... Do you know what I mean? It's like playing a computer game. The next time you get on it, you want to get further, don't you? You want to get past that level. You want you want to improve yourself. Um, and the fact that the fact like the latter stage of this season, we've we've gone we've gone back away. That's why I think it's it's really getting the Sunderland's backs up. I mean, we're not seeing trying to push for the playoffs again. But do you know what I mean? But how far we've fallen from last season? It's it's got a lot of Sunderland fans concerned, hasn't it? Yeah, it would, have been, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened if Tony Mowbray had stayed. If we, had, if we could have gotten into the top six, we'll never know. Over. Yeah, some Sunderland fans, and myself included, um, said there was a, a few results that started to slip away from Tony Mowbray before he got the sack. There was a few games that we were playing crap, basically, and we were getting, we were getting beat, and this and that and the other. But... That happens with every manager. They just, I don't know, they would just seem to have a more settled dressing room with Tony Mowbray. You know what I mean? Every yeah. team's going to get a bad game. You know, Barcelona Aye. has a bad game, Liverpool has a bad game, and he can go on and on and on. But the whole general feel of the club when Tony Mowbray was in charge, it seemed to be settled. The players liked them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think the club envisaged him leaving. It's just something that's definitely happened behind the scenes, hasn't it? There's been a big bust up. Yeah, but once again, does this does this come down to the fact like the manager of uh, Tony Mowbray not having full control of what players he wants, and he's, he's, he feels like his hands are tied behind his back, and there's only so much he can do with this. You can understand how it causes a lot of rifts, can't you? Because I mean, look how much experience Tony Mowbray has got, and he's been told by these two chances, you know, what to do. Can you understand why they, they, they get annoyed? I mean, Kale doing that, he's just a bear, isn't he? Speak when who's that? And Tony Mowbray, he's, he's, he's blood, sweat and tears for years for for his club. Um, and, and he's being told that. You can, you can understand why he just says, hey, yes, you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I thought Tony was doing a grand job, like, but let's all walk under the bridge now. We've got to look forward. And the way things have happened, Tony Mowbray would have been here this season anyway. Aye, I know. Back to the comments again. Um, we've got like seven minutes left. Um, Rafa says, look at the black cat bar. Um, the brush that underneath the carpet and he's blaming other people. Um, there's been worse seasons than this one, says Yorkshire. Mac- um, uh, Derek says, Yorkshire, how many first team squads are playing in tonight's game against the under-20 for under-21s? Stephen Simpson says, Mowbray was our turning point. He knew the score. Um, Macken said he's going to check for that. Um, Darren, uh, D. Hall for about Ahmad Diallo, uh, 0201-2021 Atlanta transfer Manchester United for £21.3 million. Manchester United got him from Atlanta. Um, no. So, I mean, he must have been young when they got him there. Yeah. But his wages, it's his wages. He must be on 40 grand a week at Man United. Must be. Well, that'll, that'll have nearly... That love nearly doubled, wasn't he? The, the more he puts himself out there, and the more the more he scores killer goals like that against right. Liverpool, the more um, 
his, his marketing value is going to increase just by scoring that one goal. You know, that last minute yeah. goal, um, the more his marketing is going to increase. And when I seen him score that goal for Man United against Liverpool, I just thought there's absolutely no chance Son and are going to get him. No. <laughs> no way at all. Um, Derek UK, no first team players that Kelly played, who's played a few senior games. Did anyone watch the EFL Cup between Peter Brown and Wickham? It was a good game. I am seeing that. Ken Walton says, looking forward to the chat next Monday. So Ken's been enjoying the uh, show tonight. Um, Kevin says, thanks for the streaming, Cabby, and a big massive thanks to Davy on the uh, on on the, on the chat and stuff. So it's a lot of positive uh, feedback. Um, Coming come back and that, you know. So, um, Will still, and you still favour us for that, are you? I mean, would you like to see a coach or a manager announced before the end of the season, or would you say it's pointless? It's getting the end of the season. Summer ahead and get things right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the stadium's important to get the stadium put right. Of course it is. You, you didn't want it to look like the... A, a scrappy idea, but uh, no. do you know what I'm saying? And you've got to have a bit of both, I guess. Um, but I, I still think the priority has to be on the on the pitch. I mean, look what Darlington did with their ground. Um, look what happened to them. Do you know what I mean? I'm, no. I'm, I'm going on extremes here, of course, but that just goes to show you. Do you know what I mean? The big, a massive, cracking looking stadium isn't to be on an held on, is it? No, no. I mean, that was George Reynolds saying. Uh... Baby, wasn't it? The Reynolds Arena, that's right. Yeah. You had gold, gold taps in the toilet. <laughs> Look here. Uh, we've got <clears throat> Mashia ones, I think, and I was that one. So did you did you go to many games at Roker Park in that then, Davy? Oh, I loved it. I full end. I, I always remember my greatest memories is Mark or Gabby Dini bombing bombing down towards a full end and slapping the ball away. The hairs used to stand up the back of my neck. <laughs> you also love Mark on Gatesy. They're my favourites. Yeah, that, I, th I think that's um, my. I mean, I've got the sun on top on now. That that Pat Patrick one. Um, John McPhail was our penalty taker. I think that that's. I ah, never missed. Never missed. You never. You, the only penalty he missed on that season was the last game of the season at Northampton. I was I was actually at that game at Roper Park. We won three now or three one. I think it was. And. Uh, up though, what that? Eh? Is that when they were already promoted? They were champions, aye, aye. It was just, it was just right. a parade sort of game. But John McPhail missed his only penalty that game, last game of the right. season. But um, I walked the park. I still think it's sad to this day. It's, uh, it's, it's been flattened. Like I think it's a crime flattening grounds like that. All that history and stuff. Um, but I mean, I always there's there's, a, there's loads of games that stand out for me. I mean, I remember. When we were getting beat um, two 0 against Huddersfield Town, um, Tony Norman was in goal for Huddersfield at the time, and I remember Tony Norman for Huddersfield running to the full wall end to, to start the the second half, or whatever it was, and the all the raw for Tony Norman, man, it was it was quality that. And then Mickey Bridges came on. Um, it was like we were losing two one at the time, and then Mickey Bridges came on. We're like. Eight minutes to go, somewhat like that. Probably, probably, it was probably less. Five minutes to go, and he scored two belt netters within a space of about four minutes, and um, it was just a mosh pit. I was standing in the in the paddocks at the time, and it was a mosh pit. The fans were going mental. Oh, thanks for your time, Sam. Oh no, David the Doofus. Hello, Cabby. How are you doing, mate? Hope you're well. Um, but yeah, can you? Did you ever go to the game where we played West Ham? And I think was it three two? I think we won or four three. And Kieran Brady, Kieran Brady stole the show. Aye, he was on Newcastle Radio the night. Was he? Aye, he was in for Marco. Oh, was he? Quality player, Kieran yeah. Brady. He, he was. He ran West Ham ragged on uh, on 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 that that game. And I always remember. Cheers, David lad. I always remember. Um, Mark well, Gabby Dean is scoring a classic goal where he just ran sideways across the 18 yard line and just slotted it home. Um, it was, it's it's just magic, and I mean I've been to the stadium for like loads, didn't it get me wrong? But you know, my main memories are, are, are Roker Park and that. You know, I seen the floodlights on a night game from miles away, 
um, saying like just it just it just had atmosphere all hour, didn't it? Like, that was yes. My first game was Sunderland boys. I was at Diamond All Junior School. I think it was about nine or ten year old or something like that, and it was Sunderland boys um, against Liverpool boys, and we lost three out. <laughs> I would love no, to I... know what year that was. I really do. Um, but I was, it was it was just mental, man. And can you remember the gold the gold membership card you used to have for the follower end? Ship card. The membership card, the gold one. I remember you used to get tokens for when there was uh, FA Cup matches. <laughs> Keep your tokens, and then you would begin in a draw. And then if you come out, you get get in the queue. <laughs> yeah, we're the days, eh? I oh, met them absolutely. Just read a few more comments before we sort of finish. Um, yeah. uh, Yorkshire Macam says, "Imagine if oh, wait a minute, got D Hall, Ballast Wiltshire PLC, a contracting company that had built the Amsterdam yeah. Arena, was contracted to build the stadium at an initial cost of fifteen million quid. <laughs> there we, there we go, fifteen million quid." Um, and don't forget when we first built the stadium of light, we didn't have the upper concourse behind the, on the north stand. It was only the main concourse. They ex- didn't they extend that? Um, was it two or three yeah. seasons later? Um, and the stadium of lights designed like a Meccano set to be extended all the way around eventually if we made a Champions League. Um, where are we now? Um, Derek says, you've got to get me on live, Cabby. Really enjoyed Davy's opinions. I stood in the full full well end too. You're welcome. Any time, Davy, I'll message him, mate. Stephen Simpson, get Kevin Phillips in. He's got his badges. Been at Leicester. Loves the club. Now to lose. Phillips has been mentioned a few. Like I said, Davy the yeah. Davies says hello, and he loves the background. D Hall, the North Stand was extended in 2000, the year 2000, to bring the capacity to 49,000, costing the club a further £7 million. Pounds, making the final cost of the stadium twenty three million. Great stats then, um Hall that absolutely. Um Derek says, see you Cabby, got a great show by all, no bother. David Duke he says, Wow, 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 whatever that means. He's having a live on onion pizza. Um correct, I rem- correct, I remember the tokens, says Stephen. It's like that song, lads, I left my heart at Roker Park. Alright, so there we go. Yeah. Park, eh? Uh so well Dave, it's been it's been a pleasure. Hopefully we can maybe see it next been month. Brilliant. It's been a great night. Hopefully we can do it next Monday if you're up for it. Yeah, definitely. You know, you've been a popular we might we might actually get Derek joining us as well. Um, yeah, we are. Uh, but, um, More than Marion. Then will you thank all your thank all your uh, customers that's rung in and text in and it's been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you've you've just done it there, dear you lad. You've just said thanks to everybody watching it. it there been it, some great comments. There has, there has, and it's the first show for the Monday, and it's there's been quite a few people coming in. Um, so on to get a couple more thingies coming in. Um, oh, I think they're just David the Deuce is just just having banter. That's not even fit for dogs. Whatever he's on about there. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so what you got planned for the rest of the night, Dave? Are you just uh, you oh, know? just chilling out, just chilling out watching the telly. Ah, it's no football on tonight, is there? No, no. Get me for the morning night where you you saturated with it. Champions League and everything. Ah, yeah. Are you watching the uh, Leeds game tomorrow? We're on Sky, aren't we? Watching the Sunderland game, aye. Ah, you not got the pub out like that? No, 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 no. Team total. <laughs> Good lad. All right then, Dave. Well, uh, thanks, mate. Okay. We'll hopefully see you next Monday. Yeah. Everybody's yeah, enjoyed it no tonight. Yeah, no problem. Speak to you soon. Good night. Good night, mate. Good night. So there we go. That's uh, that's Davy who's just joined in on the the chat there. So I will wrap it up. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in on the first show on the Monday. It's been a pleasure. Um, great having Davey he's a, he's a character I've been listening on Radio Newcastle for weeks and uh, it was great when he picked up one of my comments on YouTube um, but yeah absolutely chuffed the bits for the numbers that showed up tonight and um, don't forget you can catch me on the stream tomorrow night as you can see it's getting dark behind me now so I'll put the uh, light back on hold on you can catch me on the stream tomorrow where's uh, Legion United player Sunland um, and then 
loads more videos I'll be posting daily from me, me taxi at work, having a bit of banter. Um, and then there'll be the match on Saturday. Um, I think it's West Brom I'll be streaming. And then back to the show next Monday. Fantastic show. Thanks, Rafa. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for popping in. Typical Sunderland to win against Leeds and West Brom. You know what's going to happen, Yorkshire. The thing is, oh, will you be happy with a point? Anyway, I'll end it there. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It means a lot. It really does. And um, we'll see you again soon.